The prison system is a self-perpetuating system. People are locked up that makes their circumstances worse. There comes a point where the punishment becomes too much and it not only affects the women, it affects their children. I believe that there is zero rehabilitation in the prison system. They're expecting you back. There's so many folks who don't have a voice to be able to communicate what's happening to them or what's happening within this system. There's a lot of languages that they use to describe us, ex-offenders, um, returning citizens, formerly incarcerated. Unfortunately, I've had the, the honor of being in three different county prisons. I remember when I hear that door slam for the first time, I was shamed. I was so embarrassed that my mother's son was in jail. I started my prison sentence in high security and I stayed there for four and a half years. I worked my way down, good behavior, doing what I was supposed to do. A 25 to 50 year sentence for delivering nine tenths of one gram of heroin. I did 25 years inside, now I have to do 25 years on parole outside and I've been home 10 or 11 years now. There's a lot of mind games that you play with yourself, right? Um, when you're inside these institutions um, that help maintain your sanity. Some of the treatment in prison um, is really like less than humane. Talk to you any kind of way, screamed at, cussed at. If you did the same things, you would get rolled up or put in the hole. It usually has to do with um, staff and security. And if they are people of conscience, and then, um, then you might get treated fairly. I remember my first night in Bucks County. And it took me about three days to get this. You know, a toothbrush, a deodorant, soap, a wash rag, because none of them cared. I was at a prison when one of the captains sexually assaulted some women, and the system never got them any kind of help. Fights happen in prison all the time. It's a different set of rules. And if you're not used to it, you better get used to it as soon as the door closes. It's a very sad and traumatic place to be. I never want to go back. <laughs> run the whole thing. We do the yard work, we do the preparing of the food, everything else. The highest paying job I had in New Jersey was 19 cents an hour. Um, <laughs> and we work, you work hard. There were so many things that I provided to the state of New Jersey that was profitable to that state. I mean, clothing contracts, food contracts, uh, bed contracts. I mean, there, you think of everything it takes to run a prison, there's somebody making a lot of money. When you really, you know, look under the hood and, and, and kind of pull back the layers of this, you really see it's about money. It's about an economy. You know, it's, it's about labor. I remember Johnny Cochran saying, the color of justice in America is green. So if you have money, your chances of, of getting justice are, are far better than those people who don't have money. The sense disparity in the United States is ridiculous. I cannot tell you how many women I've met that were serving life sentences for drug convictions. In the community that I come from, and I'm talking about the African American community, it's no longer a, a stigma for somebody to have been inside, been in prison. If you really look at the 13th Amendment, we technically didn't free the slaves. We said, you can free the slaves unless you catch them committing a crime. There have been a lot of changes, a lot of so-called progress, and there has been some progress. Nevertheless, I think at the, at the root of the system, that attitude of racism still exists today.
I remember when I went into prison, they had Pell Grants, I had one. I started to go to college in order to earn a degree, and then the Pell Grants were stopped. Not thinking about the fact that people who got degrees were less likely to commit crimes and come back to prison again. I made mistakes and I paid for my mistakes. However, you come back out into this world and people don't want to give you another chance. It's like you continue to pay for this sentence. I went from being homeless to incarcerated to homeless. After being released, you're not staked with a big amount of money. So when you're released, you have to find your own place to stay, how you're going to get there, clothes to wear, how you're going to pay your bills. A lot of times people want to do background checks on you. And once they see that you have something on your background, they don't want to give you an opportunity to rent from them or to work from them. If you don't have the support of uh, family or loved ones coming out of prison, uh, it's very difficult. I was denied coming home back to my house in Pittsburgh. They released me uh, in Patterson, New Jersey. I had to, you know, line up at a homeless shelter. When I made my way to my parole officers, all these things that I thought was available, you know, which could have helped me. He said that that fund, you know, is depleted or that account is depleted, and here was a check for $24. None of this is actually setting me up to succeed to not going back. There are a lot of people in prison who really want to change. People have to be brought into the system who, who care. The separation of mother and child, I cannot tell you how hard it is or almost impossible to keep a relationship or a bond when you get 15 minute phone calls. You had the means to send us away. Why can't you have the means so that the children and the women can be in a nurturing, healthy environment? Because in the long range, that child doesn't end up in the system. Every institution that I've been in, I've always been assigned a job from the day that I entered those institutions. Use it for the betterment of society when I leave this place. So that you're saying we ended up training this individual as a skilled certified welder, as a certified carpenter. If the community got involved, if people were willing to hire someone right out of jail, it may not be successful every time but the successes will be there. This whole system is difficult. I don't believe there's any one single answer. This is how you do it, except to treat people like you want to be treated. I know that's simplistic, but I believe that that is at the root of turning the system around. When we're coming into the system, it's because we're broken. And we've been broken in life for a long time. And unfortunately, when we're standing in front of a judge, he's not looking at what brought us to this point. Because of my alcohol and drug addiction for so long, I got involved with a 12-step fellowship. So I got a sponsor, I got a mentor, a, a spiritual advisor, you know, and all of that. I began to see things in a different light. Every morning I wake up and I text 15 to 20 people, good morning with a little positive inspiration. Have a great day and I get responses all the time. And that connection, those, having those people in my life, one, it keeps me clean and sober. Two, it lets me know that they're reciprocating the love that I'm giving them. And three, it keeps me out of jail. It keeps me in a, in a positive mindset. And it does get better. I'm living proof that it gets better, but you have to work at it. So trauma-based groups are probably a very, very big need. I also believe in peer support systems. I believe that the person that's gonna help me the most is the one that's living like I wanna live, but live like I used to live. I happen to come across people that continue to give me an opportunity off of their interaction with me. And it, it gave me an ability to still be successful in life. You know, for me to say, you know, I'm a director at a nonprofit at Operation Better Block. Um, that's, that's a blessing. Don't walk out of prison or jail or wherever it may be and be that person for the rest of your life. Don't let it define you. You can change. The things that people watch on TV and the stigmas attached 
to criminals or formerly incarcerated people or drug addicts, they're wrong. They're so, so wrong. Don't just categorize everybody in one lump sum because we are far from that. And some of the best people you'll ever meet, the most talented individuals you'll ever meet, are formerly incarcerated individuals.